Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I hope everybody's having a great week to this point. Hope that your year's gotten out to a great start. Uh, before I do this, look, you know the routine. Uh, if you like what you see in here on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, uh, and subscribe. Uh, if you are a person who is familiar with the work that we do at the Odyssey Project at the Black Voice, who I am and what I have been doing for now three decades. Uh, show your love and support by contributing and donating. This work that we do is tireless. It is demanding in the area of resources and it is incessant in its need uh, to be performed. And there are so many gaps in what is needed and what is being provided uh, in the ways of research, in the ways of program development, in the ways of advocacy, um, in dealing with the issues directly and so much more. Um, and yet we have been at the forefront of this battle again for decades. So I'm asking you uh, to look in the description box and choose a way to give with that being said, I want to talk to you about something that if you followed me for any time, you know that I am immensely a pa passionate about that. And uh, it's family. Now, we can talk about family in so many different ways and I've done that. Uh, I have written about it in great detail in uh, The Miseducation of Black Youth, my 16th book, Born in, Cat Born in Captivity, Psychopathology as a Legacy of Slavery. 19th book and my 23rd book The Undoing of the African American Mind and then I've lectured on it incessantly written over 200 articles on it uh, which can be googled and researched and read uh, and I suggest you do so uh, so there's no question about my passion for the black family and my belief in the relevance and importance of the black family what I want to talk about specifically here in a way uh, that to me is one of the most uh, insidious uh, contributors to the disintegration of the black family, and that is uh, black self-hatred by way of uh, gender conflict. And what I mean by that is when you don't understand why you're where you're at, and I've said this how many times, we struggle and we suffer because we don't understand how things work. And when we don't understand how things work, people get to use uh, our own uh, emotions, our own feelings, our own struggles, our own suffering against us. We will aim our anger at everyone except those who are really truly the problem. And let, let me say this in the beginning. If you've read my first book, The Invisible Father, you know how I feel about absentee fatherhood. You know how I feel about the mishandling of our women, but you also know how I feel about the importance of our men. And that's why I'm here. I can't sit up and read an email or scroll and observe uh, information on a timeline, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Facebook, without seeing some form of gender hatred coming from either a black man or a black woman towards the opposite sex. Uh, and it's, and, and the thing is, the entire goal was to divide us. The entire goal was to find a way to separate us. The, the entire goal was to work against the unification of blacks by way of the strengthening of the black family. When J. Edgar Hoover said that the greatest threat to national, U.S. national security was black unity, he meant that. He understood the importance. And through COINTELPRO and a number of other uh, government-funded uh, initiatives, they literally disrupted the black community and it started with the black family. It wasn't just an attack on the Black Panther Party. It wasn't just an attack on the black nationalist party. It was an attack on the black family. The very nature and source and funding and force behind those organizations, uh, they understood the power of the family and they started to attack it. The government has contributed to it. Now don't get me wrong, it is something uh, it, it, 
it is something that has to be acknowledged that without our compliant behavior, black compliance is what strengthens uh, racism. Black compliance is what strengthens uh, classism and elitism uh, in a way that allows it to negatively impact our lives. If there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. So then we must acknowledge that there are some things that we are doing that we shouldn't be doing that allows their machinations and uh, Nefari's intentions to have power and root and force in our lives. And we have to work on that. We're going to have to discover ourselves, or should I say rediscover ourselves. We're going to have to get to a point where we are aware of who we are and the importance of our roles in this race, in this community, in this fight, in this war. We're going to have to, with a level of intensity and commitment, understand that we cannot operate in exclusivity, in gender exclusivity. In other words, we can't keep on this path of I don't need her, uh, I don't need him. And so, I mean, some of the vitriol that is spewed towards the opposite sex is totally uh, amazing. And it's something that we are going to have to be willing to confront honestly. And when I say honestly, that means that we're going to have to be willing to sit up and say that this is not um, going to work. We're going to have to say that this is not going to uh, play out well. Uh, and I just look at some of the things that are being said. You know, I saw some bull crap this morning where uh, a woman was going on, don't get married to a man over 43 because all they're going to do is once you get married is you're going to end up spending all your money taking care of them because they're going to start dying and getting sick on you. And so, I mean, and, and the thing is, what, what you don't realize is that there's these plateaus that you get to that is naturally social. And so you get to certain ages and all of a sudden you can age out of opportunity. And then you got a lot of women, women, I'm just going to be honest with you. You got a lot of you women that took that road of maligning the black man, thinking that you can play a game that you weren't built to play. And you got out there and you did all that. And then you got to a point where you figured, okay, I'm finally ready to settle down. And all of a sudden you're looking at the people that are in your age bracket are no longer uh, caping for you. And so now the assault is on. Flip side, men, you're out there when you need to be focused on building, you're out there playing that game. You're out there chasing tail. You're out there uh, running, you know, spitting games, saying whatever you gotta say to do to get what you want and, you know, playing with you, using your bag to manipulate and control women and all the other stuff. And then all of a sudden, when it gets time to where you start getting old, and, 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 and then, you know, what if there is some truth to it? What if, you know, you wait until you get old and sickly and you can't move around, play the game no more, now you want to settle down? That's not, that's, that's not the way to do it again. This lack of trust is being fueled by bad behaviors, but bad behaviors aren't the norm. You got to get out there and meet people. You got to put yourself in situations. I know a lot of good men. I know a lot of good women. The problem is that we are starting to be sucked in by this barrage of negative information about the people we're supposed to be loving and the people we're supposed to be caring about. And it creates this negative idea and this negative energy and this vitriol that we keep spewing without thinking. We keep attacking without thinking. Number one is you don't perpetuate the race without procreation. You don't procreation without coming together with the very person that you're spewing all this vitriol on. And you're constantly getting to this point where you are creating barriers that make it impossible to raise healthy, whole children. And I've, I've showed you in so many different ways. I'm doing a symposium in less than a week and a, uh, week, roughly a week and a half from now on the 27th, I'm doing a symposium 
on epigenetics, on adverse child experiences, on microaggressions, on chronic stress and how it's negatively impacting the lives of our children based on their childhood experiences and how we're responsible for that. I'm also working with the Harris County uh, Sheriff's Office and a part of this symposium is going to be learning how to bridge and, and, and uh, close the gap of trust when it comes to law enforcement. And I actually have some people within who are actually working to reduce recidivism because the absence of male uh, role models, 1.3 million of which are in prison, uh, is leading to a lot of this negative outcomes long into life. And I'm talking about physiological outcomes, psychological outcomes, not to, met, not to mention uh, criminology and so many other uh, criminology, criminality, and, and all, all the other things that are involved. We have to do better. Look, on that note, I'm out of here. Uh, I just had to put that in there. Remember, if you like what you see, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. If you believe in the work that we're doing in the area of research with our research and our program development uh, mechanism, the work we're doing in advocacy in school districts, in jails and prisons, and so many other ways, please show some love and support us but we have got to find a way to love one another this is absolutely ridiculous and it's not going to help and if you think that we can do this without one another keep thinking it and keep watching what's happening in the trend of our social progression of the lack thereof and the more we hate on each other the more we sit up and blame one another the worse it gets look at the outcomes stop going with your feelings and pay attention i've been studying this trend for two and a half decades i've been watching the fillers and the very thing is you realize that a bunch of these people that are putting these videos out are backed by organizations of people who don't look like them to put that out to fuel that to trigger that <coughs> you don't think that there are studies that let them know what triggers you and what can get you to do what it's been done for years. Propaganda is nothing new. And now they're just more instruments, more mechanisms, and more ways to get it done. And now it's in rapid fire session. Uh, and it's wreaking havoc. And if we don't do something about it, we are going to be destroyed. And I'm not being, uh, I'm not over exaggerating. I'm not being melodramatic. I'm being extremely real with you. We are, it's happening now. If you don't pay attention to it, it's just everything is just normal to you. you. You've become that frog in that warm water on the stove that the temperatures gradually turned up on and you don't even realize that you're about to die. That's where we're at. And if we don't do something about it, it's going to be too late. On that note, I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Peace.